Good morning. Uh, today we are still continuing with Unit 2, and we are going to be doing Module 1.5 today. And Module 1.5 is Solve Ratio Problems. So you can look at our learning target for this one. Uh, I can solve real-world problems involving ratio relationships by using bar diagrams, double number lines, and equivalent ratios. So different methods of finding ratios. Uh, the vocabulary that we will be covering in this are equivalent fractions and ratio, and this is stuff we have already done in the past. So basically, we will be working with the same words that we have learned in the past, okay? So let's start uh, with a word problem because we are now solving ratio problems, uh, which are the real world problems. Um, so let's say, uh, suppose a three out of five randomly selected students, okay? So three out of five randomly selected students um, at a certain school play sports. Okay, so three out of five play sports. Okay, three out of five play sports. And then let's say that there are 525 students at the school. The total of 525 students at the school. And you can create a, a bar diagram to predict how many of the students play sports, okay? So I'm gonna show you the bar diagram method, and I'm also gonna show you how to create an equivalent ratio in order to solve this, okay? So let's say I begin with a bar diagram. So since we are saying three out of five, uh, we are going to draw a bar, okay? And we are going to have five parts in there because what is my denominator because it's three out of five so I'm going to draw one two three four and five okay so three out of five students play sports so that is why I divided the bar into five equal sections and then I am going to shade and label the diagram and how many play sports that is three so I am going to take, this is one, this is two, and this is three. All right, so three out of the five. And so this much, this, is, this much is playing sports. So they play sports, right? And then this much is who do not play sports. Do not play sports. All right, and so now we look at this. How, how many students do we have? We have a total of 525 students, okay? 525 students overall. So what we're gonna do is we are going to divide the total number of students by five to determine the value of each section, all right? So I'm going to divide 525 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I do 500, let me bring this here. All right, so if I do 525 by 5, I know that 1 times 5 is 5, get 0. Bring this down, cannot, so this becomes 0. All right, so that is here. And then I bring this down and five times five gives me 25, all right? So each section has how much? It has 105 students. So if I draw this again, I'm just going to show you what this means. So we have one, two, three, four, and five, okay? And I should have made it more proportional over here, there we go. All right, and then we know that this much over here plays sports, right? And the part that does not is this much, does not 
play sports all right and since i have divided 525 because what is the total amount i have 525 students overall okay so i have got to divide it by five because five sections and each section has 105 in there 105 in there okay and so now there are three sections which are label sports so this one this one and this one right so three sections are label sports play sports so we can do three of these times 105 because three of them play sports and what do i get i get three times five is 15 and then I get three times zero is zero, and I get one, and three times one is three. So this is my answer over here. The 315 students do play sports in the school. All right, so this is how I can use a bar diagram, but I also want to show you using an equivalent ratio. So look over here, three out of five. Okay, play sports. So then we are looking at um, how many students do we have? We have 525 students, okay? So this is my total amount of students, 525. And then if you cannot figure out, if a number is too high and you're like, ooh, uh, you know, what should I multiply to get that number? You can do the reverse order, which is division, okay? So if I divide, 525 by 5, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 105. That's what I have over here. Okay? So, uh, what am I doing here? I am dividing by this to get this number. Okay? Because if I do 525 by 5, uh, uh, you know, or 525 uh, by 5, this is what I get. All right? So, then I'm going to do, if I'm going from here to here, See how the arrow is going in the reverse direction? So the inverse of division is what? Multiplication. So I am going to uh, multiply 3 times 105. And when I do 3 times 105, I'm going to get 315 students. So look, the same answer. Okay, so I've just created it into an equivalent ratio in order for you to see that both are going to uh, give me the same answer. So this is like a bar diagram over here, and this one is creating it into an equivalent uh, ratio. Uh, these are also equivalent fractions, same thing, all right? They mean the same, they have the same value, all right? So let's do another problem, and... Okay, I'm going to take you over here and all right, here we go. All right, so here is my question and I'm going to pull this up so you can see what we're doing. All right, so um, it says that Two out of three randomly selected students in Mrs. Mason's class at Heritage Middle School prefer cats as a household pet than any other pet. If there are 750 students at Heritage Middle School, how many students can be expected to prefer cats as a household pet? All right, so once again, I'm going to show you the two methods. Uh, you can make a bar diagram. And so the first thing I'm going to see is I have um, okay, here. Uh, two out of three. So this is the first thing I'm looking at. Okay, so in my bar diagram, I am going to make a bar with three parts. One, two, and three. All right, and I'm going to shade and label the diagram. And how many prefer cats? That is two of them. So one and two. So two prefer cats. 
because two out of three prefer cats. All right, so this much, this much prefer cats. All right, do not prefer cats would be that one. Okay, so this part over here, do not prefer cats. Do not prefer cats. All right, and then how many total students do I have? I have 750 students, 750 students overall. All right, so that's the first thing if I'm making a bar diagram. I'm going to shade two sections to represent the two out of the three students who prefer cats. Then I'm going to label each group and the total number of students at the school, which is 750. And then I'm going to find the value of each section. In order for me to do that, I'm going to divide the total number, which is 750, by what? One, two, three sections. By three sections. And when I divide 750 by three, I know that two times three is six. I get one remainder. I bring this down. Five times three is 15, okay? And of course, I have this zero. So 250. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is that each section represents 250. So I'm going to write that here so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, 250 in each section uh, over there. All right, so I'm dividing the total number of students by three to determine the value of each section. And because I have 750 divided by three, each section has 200. 50 in there okay represents 250 students uh, because there are two sections two sections that are labeled as uh, preferring cats uh, we are going to do 250 times 2 and that gives me 500 students so I did this 2 times 250 which gives me 500 students who prefer cats. And so this is my answer over here. Okay, now let me also show this to you um, as an equivalent ratio. So let me just bring this up here. All right, so I'm gonna write the same thing that we did with the bar diagram. I am just going to uh, write it in an equivalent ratio format. I'm gonna make them into equivalent fractions. So we have two out of three is equal to your total number of students is 500, okay? Uh, sorry, uh, it is 750, okay. All right, two out of three, your total amount of students is 750. So I'm going to put that over here. Okay, and then I look at what times three would give me 750, or I can also go backwards and see 750 divided by three what I get. But I know that looking at this, I have three times 250 is going to give me 750. And so whatever I do to the denominator, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the numerator. So I get times 250, and that gives me 500 students who prefer cats. Look, same answer, same answer. Okay? Um, I can also do, I just want you to see that, I can also do, let me use a different color, same thing. If I write 2 out of 3, is equal to how much out of 750? And what I was saying earlier is if I cannot figure out what I need to multiply in order to get 750, I can do the reverse of multiplication. And if I divide 750 by three, I am going to be getting 250. So I know that if I divide by 250, I will get three, okay? And so if I'm dividing here, the inverse operation is multiplication. 
if the arrow is going in the other direction in an equivalent ratio. And so then that gives me 500 again. So it doesn't matter whichever method I use, I will still end up with exactly the same answer. All right, so, all right. Let's now look at this one, all right? So here's another question and uh, it says during their family vacation, Okay, so during their family vacation, Marcus took 18 photos on his cell phone. The ratio of the number of photos Marcus took to the number of photos his sister Maribel took is three to four. How many photos did Maribel take? All right, so. Let me go ahead once again and I am going to use this color so it's easier for you to see. So I can use a bar diagram to solve the problem. So it's talking about the ratio of number of photos Marcus took to the number that Maribel took is this much 3 to 4. So I am going to go ahead and make a bar diagram with four parts. One, two, three, and four, okay? And then I'm going to divide, I've divided it into four equal sections, and so then I'm going to shade and label the diagram. I'm going to shade three sections to represent the ratio three to four, okay? So this is one, this is two, this is three, all right, so that is how much Marcus has taken. This is how much Marcus has taken. All right, so from here to here is what Marcus has taken, and he has taken 18 photos. So he has taken 18 photos, okay, 18 photos. And then I'm going to look at uh, the number Okay, which is left behind the bar that is left behind. What is that? This whole thing, uh, you know. So we have 18 photos taken by Mary uh, by Marcus, and because uh, Marcus took 18 photos, we're going to label the three shaded sections as 18 photos. Okay, and okay, once again, we divided it into four equal sections. We shaded three sections to represent the ratio of three to four. And you're going to add labels for Marcus and Maribel. Because Maribel took this much. All right, so this is Maribel. All right, now, next we're going to find the value of each section. All right, so if we have uh, the total number of photos Maribel took, uh, Marcus took, by three because 18 over here and we have three of the sections okay so we are going to do 18 divided by three and what do i get i get six so for each section we are just going to put six we divided 18 by three because again once again we have three sections over here talking about marcus and i get six so each section is six over here all right, so now look at that. So there are four sec sections that represent the number of photos Maribel took. So we are going to do six times four in order to find out how much Maribel took. And she took how much? 24 photos. She took 24 photos. So this is how we are solving using a bar diagram, okay? Now, I'm going to show the same thing to you uh, using equivalent ratios, okay? So I'm going to use equivalent ratios. So once again, uh, it, it's saying that Marcus and his sister, three to four, okay? So three out of four, all right? And then with Marcus, he took how much? He took 18. So how much did Maribel take? 
all right? So now we can see, okay, if I am going to do equivalent ratios, whatever I do to the numerator, I do the same thing to the denominator. So three times six gives me 18. Whatever I do to the numerator, I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the denominator, times six. And I get 24 photos that were taken by Maribel. All right, so that is how, uh, by creating an equivalent ratio, I get the same result as if I was creating a bar diagram, all right? All right, so here is another one. And I'm going to show you different methods of solving this also. All right, let's look at this one. bring this a little bit here so you can see the entire problem okay so the question states that the manager of a small hotel determines that it takes 30 loads of laundry to clean the towels and sheets of the hotel's rooms each day okay so 30 loads of laundry a large bottle of laundry detergent contains 150 ounces, and the label indicates that the contents of the bottle can clean 75 loads. How many ounces of detergent are needed to clean the hotel's towels and sheets each day? All right, so you can represent uh, this ratio relationship and solve the problem by using double number lines uh, you can also use equivalent ratios. So let me show you using a double number line. Okay, so I, we're going to use a double number line. Uh, the top number line represents the number of loads of laundry. Okay, so the top number line. I'm sorry, it's not looking very straight, but okay. So here we go. These are the loads of laundry. Okay, and then we have the bottom number line which represents the number of ounces of detergent needed. Okay, so the bottom one is going to represent, okay, the ounces of detergent that we need. Okay, detergent, and this is in ounces. All right, now <clears throat> we are going to mark the ratio of loads to detergents, which is over here. Uh, we have this and we have this. All right, so 75 to 150. That is my ratio. Okay, so we are going to mark and label equal increments to show 30 loads. All right, so it's going to be over there the first thing of course we have a zero okay this is zero and we can see that we have 15 30 all right so we are doing increments of 15 we have 45 we have 60 and we have 75 all right so again, we are marking and labeling equal increments to show 30 loads. And what I can do is I'm just going to bring this all the way down over here. And I know that my 75 loads, <coughs> I need 150. <clears throat> all right. Now we're going to find the equivalent ratio because 150 there are five equal se uh, sections because 150 divided by 5 gives me 30, right? So 150 divided by 5, okay? So this is going to give me 30 because 5 times 3 is 15. And then we have the 0. All right? So that's why we label each uh, equal increments of 30 on the bottom number line also, okay? So this is 30 
60, 90, 120, and 150. So the value on the bottom number line that corresponds with 30 loads is how much? This much. So with 30 loads, so we're looking at this part. We're looking at this part now. All right. So for 30 loads is 60 ounces of detergent. And so 60 ounces of detergent are needed each day to do the laundry. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another method. All right. I'm going to show you another method how this can easily be done. All right. So if I look at this, it said 75 loads to 150 detergent ounces, ounces of detergent, right? So if I look at 75, I know that 75 times 2 is how much? It's 150, right? So just by looking at that, I can first simplify the ratio. I can first simplify the ratio. So if I was simplifying this, I am doing what? I'm dividing by 75. It's just like uh, simplifying a fraction, basically. All right? And what do I get over here? I get one half. All right? Now, once I have that one half laid out, so I know the ratio is one to two. Okay? So one load to two ounces. So one load to two ounces. Okay? So one load to two ounces of detergent. So therefore, if I am trying to find for 30 loads, what would it be? So I would put for 30 loads would be how much? So if I just set it up like this, it becomes uh, super simple also, because look, whatever I do to the numerator, so one times what gives me 30? Times 30. So I'm doing times 30. And whatever I do to the numerator, I do exactly the same thing to the denominator. So 2 times 30, and I get what? I get 60 ounces. All right, so same answer, no matter which method I do this, okay? Uh, I can also, uh, if you don't want to simplify, that is perfectly fine. I can do one more thing. All right, so let me, uh, I can show that to you right over here. All right, so it's going to be, we can write it also as a ratio, loads of laundry, uh, which you're talking about is 30 to how much of this, all right, which is the ounces of detergent, is equal to, 75 loads of laundry to how much? 150 ounces of detergent. All right. So therefore, again, this is my laundry. This is detergent. Laundry, detergent. All right. So now what do I need to do? I look at this and I am going to scale down. Okay. And so 75 and I'm looking at that. So if I divide 75 by 30, I get 2 and 5 tenth. Okay? So basically 75 divided by 2 and a half is going to give me 30. All right? And then whatever I do to the numerator, I am going to do the same thing to the denominator. And I divide 150 by 2 and 5 tenth. All right? And I am going to get 60 as my answer. So here's another way. It's perfectly all right. Uh, whatever works for you all, there are several ways to do the same problem. All right. Let's do another problem. And, okay. So here we go. Right, example three, and let's look at this. The manager of a grocery store determines that an average of 480 jars of peanut butter are sold each week. Two cases of peanut butter contain 96 jars. How many cases of peanut butter should the manager order each week? So again, several 
techniques are possible. Um, so I am going to create a double number line so that you understand what a double number line is. And the top number line is going to represent the number of cases of peanut butter. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. Let me first pull this down. And all right, so we're going to make a double number line. All right, so this is cases of peanut butter. That's what I'm going to make as the top number line. All right, and then the bottom li uh, line is going to represent the number of jars of peanut butter. Okay, so this is the cases of, and then the bottom line is going to represent the jars of peanut butter. Okay, this is the jars of peanut butter. Okay, so here we go, jars of peanut butter. All right, now, once I have that, we are going to mark the ratio of cases to jars, okay? So cases to jars. So we have two, all right? Two, because it's saying two cases, contains how many jars? 296, 296. So this is my ratio, okay? Two, uh, two cases, 296. And then I'm looking at, uh, we are going to mark the ratio 2 to 96, and then we are going to mark and label equal increments to show 480 jars, okay? So if I do, this is zero and zero. Okay, so if I have this, this is two to 96, and then we are trying to go all the way to how much? We are going to see how many for 480 jars, okay? So then I go over here, and I get what? 96 times two, which is 192. 96 times three, okay? And I am going to get 288. 288 times four, and I'm going to get 384. 384. And then here, and I am going to get 480. And this is the part that the question is, how much is this going to be? How many cases is that going to be? All right. So now uh, what do I do? I know that it's going up as two, four, six, eight. And that is basically what the increments are going up. Because for two jars, it is 96. So if I'm creating equivalent ratios, this is going to be four, six, eight. And this is going to be 10 over here. Okay, so this is going to be 10 over here. All right. So here we go. This is 10. All right, and remember my ratio was 2 to 96. All right, so if I look at this, the value on the top number line that corresponds with 480 jars is this. Okay, and so therefore, 10 cases should be ordered each week. 10 cases should be ordered each week. So this is by making a double number line. Uh, we can also do this based on equivalent ratios. And so we have two to 96, I'm making an equivalent ratio, will equal how much, how many cases if I have 480 overall, okay? So now I know because 96 times five is equal to 480, I am going to multiply over here. 96 times five gives me 480, okay? And whatever I do to the denominator, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing to the numerator. So this is times five. And I end up with what? I get 10 cases. And here is my answer. So this is how I get 10 cases of peanut butter each week. All right? So this is basically, uh, once again, a quick uh, 
the, what our learning target was. We are solving real world problems involving racial relationships. And I showed you how to use bar diagrams, uh, how to use double number lines, and how to create equivalent ratios. So there are several ways that this uh, can be solved. All right, and that concludes our uh, module 1.5. Have a great day.